All right, ladies and gentlemen, the police chief of St. Louis County Police, as we speak, is holding a news conference saying there are many leads uh, in the Ferguson manhunt. Man uh, there are some rewards out there. But don't forget the signs during the Michael Brown when they were trying to get testimony from witnesses. Snitches get stitches. Why don't why does the media and the Justice Department address all of that? That's why no one's cooperating. They're afraid. They're scared for their lives. Anyway, John Lott joins us. But first, let's watch this. Uh, Carol Costello and a state senator from Missouri. Watch. Yes, it is a wonderful thing to have the resignations of the chief as well as others, but that simply is not going to do. We have called for the disbandment of the police department in Ferguson. Yes, we are concerned about police officers who are being attacked, but I'm also concerned about the African Americans who are attacked every single day and have bullets through their heads by police officers. You know, that is the most irresponsible thing I've ever heard, and I don't I, I would bet my my, 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 a lot of money, not that I have it, that's, that's, uh, uh, Carol Costello just went like this and went to the next question and didn't say, what the heck are you talking about? African Americans having bullets shot through their head every day. If they are, they're by other African Americans, not by cops. Joining us now is John Lott, President, Crime Prevention Research Center, an economist and best-selling author. Hello, John. Great to talk to you again, Steve. You know, that kind of talk really ticks me off. Right, it it's saddening. I mean, there's so much anger there that I think is unjustifiable. And, it, you know, you have police officers put their lives on the line every day, and we've had police officers shot at and killed. And one can only imagine that some of that type of irresponsible language has, has been responsible for increased risks that police officers are facing. Yeah, I, they, you know, this Justice Department report you know, that Obama referred to on Jimmy Kimmel. And let's, let's play that Obama soundbite from Kimmel yesterday. In the same way that you can't generalize uh, about police officers who do uh, an extraordinarily tough job, overwhelmingly they do it professionally. You can't generalize about protesters who, it turns out, had some very legitimate grievances. The Justice Department report showed that they were being stopped. Uh, African Americans were being stopped disproportionately, mainly, so the city could raise money, uh, even though uh, these were. All right, that, yeah. that, there were some things in the Justice Department report, the emails, and I don't know, even if you want to go to use of tasers, I'm not, but to, to use this argument, and John, t talk about how ludicrous this is, to use the argument that, that well, the, uh, Ferguson is 60% black and 85% of the stops, or 68% black and 80% of the stops were, by, were for African Americans. What does that mean? Yeah, look, there, it doesn't even prove that blacks are being treated differently than whites. I know the Obama administration, when you read through the report, any difference statistically they take as evidence of racial discrimination. But I'll just give you one example. I mean, they're pointing out that Ferguson is somehow being unusual or a hotbed of racism. Nationwide, blacks are stopped for traffic violations at 31% more often than whites are. Ferguson is actually less than the national average. You have 67% of the population are blacks. They make up 85% of the traffic stops. If, if traffic stops in Ferguson were the same as they were nationally, you'd have over 87% of the traffic stops would be for, of blacks there. So it's actually less than the national average. But look, you look at data from the National Traffic Safety Board, others, unfortunately, blacks tend to drive, get more tickets drive more recklessly, even if you just look at blacks who die in traffic accidents, blacks are twice as likely as the rest of the population to die in traffic accidents. And those drivers who do drive in traffic accidents, it turns out they tend to have relatively bad driving records. They tend to be much more likely to be stopped for speeding, much more likely to be stopped for other types of moving violations. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And, and you know that uh, it, uh, it, it, blacks co di commit a disproportionate amount of crime in this country, don't they? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, unfortunately, it's across the board. But look, w males are 42% more likely to be stopped for traffic stops than women are. Does that mean that there's sexism by police officers for stopping them? No, but it would mean it, but John, but it would mean it the other way. <laughs> if it was women getting stopped yeah. more often, then it would be sexism. Ay, ay, ay. Very quickly. Let's talk about the, the emails for a second. 
They, they have seven emails, and I'm going to say right up front, I think they look really bad. But the thing is, when you read the report, they don't tell you exactly how many people were involved with sending the emails. They say, they say a few were involved with the emails, but that probably actually includes the people who received them. So let's say it's one or two people who are sending these emails right. over a period of, of at least seven years. Uh, there were probably 60 some police officers. Right, that's a very, that's an infinitesimal percentage. John, always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. Up next, folks, Matt K. Lewis of The Daily Caller. Don't go away.